Okay, guys. So, I was just scrolling through Facebook, and I saw a post on one of the RVing groups pages, and uh, I saw a post from Clarence Chambers a giant tree fell through his RV when him and his wife were sleeping. And I could just imagine what that would have felt like the moment you woke up to a, to a loud crushing like that and not knowing if it's going to kill you or whatnot. And then looking at this tree that's right next to your legs. I mean, almost chopped your legs off and your wife's. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty rough. So um, let's dive into it, guys. Okay, guys, I'm going to call Clarence here. Um, a tree crashed through his RV. <laughs> Man, that must have been scary. Let's give it a shot here. <laughs> you are too, man. Um, how's it going? Well, I'm just sitting here. Uh, just the wife and I are here, and you know, we were discussing uh, the incident. And yeah. I'm trying to determine, you know, what we learned from what happened in our experience up there. And uh, yeah, I, I will never park in a place where a tree is leaning. Anywhere near the direction where I would park my RV. Right, that's some good advice. What did you, what did you like feel when, uh, after you woke up and there was a tree next to your leg? <laughs> well, actually, I remember I was sleeping on my stomach or maybe my side a little bit, but uh, and I subconsciously it was eleven thirty at night and it was pitch dark in there and. You know, I, I knew that, that a tree had fell. My wife spoke first. Clarence, Clarence, but a tree fell on us. Oh. And so, you know, which which I knew, and it just, you know, it was just unbelievable. <laughs> you had already been, of course, once a tree hit, then you, you were shoved over into, the, into this thing. But you know what the scary part was, Mike? What? It was pitch dark. And we didn't know if the tree was going to pivot or fall deeper and, you know, roll or whatever and, you know, and crush us. Right. And, and we're just at that point, you know, the little tip out, you, you know, it's crushed in at the bottom part of it. And we were kind of stuck in there like rats. Wow. And that little, the little window I couldn't get open, I, there, there was no room to turn around because, you know, I just wasn't room because it was crushed and so I couldn't get had a hard time getting it open but I finally did but it was really scary because we didn't know pitch dark what the tree whether it was going to move again right because it's not like you could have turned the lights on because they were probably disengaged at that point right yeah they were they were they were uh, severed everything was severed wow wow yeah. that's the only yeah, the only thing that saved us, Mike, was that the tree was long, and there was a mountain. That that you know the top part of it hit that mountain. If oh, okay. If that mountain hadn't been there, it would have went on down, and just you know we would have been choked into the tree. Yeah, it would have went right through it. Wow. Yeah, so it was. Uh, I'm going to tell you that we were traumatized for months. How long you know, ago did I mean, this happen? Yeah, night, night, you know, we had nightmares, I kept dreaming about trees, things falling. Yeah. It, uh, you know what, I've always said June 9th, I'm not the real positive, but that's, it's always been in my mind that it happened June 9th at 11.30 p.m. It was not in the park, it was in the forestry. Wow. That's... That's so Cal Capitone. 
Yeah, that's something that'll definitely give a person uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you're never going to want to park next to trees again. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, you know, we've been going up there camping, you know, even before Denise and I were married. You know, we've been camping up there for 40 years. Right. And uh, so now we're thinking about going to the ocean, uh, but uh, but I'm worried, you know, without a shirt on, I look like a sea lion, and I know that's what sharks eat, so I don't know if I want to go there. Either. Oh, I look the same way. <laughs> Are you guys full-timers? We are not full timers. I would like to be a full timer. We've got friends that are full timers. Right. So, uh, do you have any advice for for anybody so through your experience um, that could, like, possibly save somebody else from going through the same thing? Well, uh, like I first said, any tree that is even looks like it's leaning, just think about this just for a moment, Mike. That tree has probably been standing there 100 or 150 years. Yep. You know, and we we were just in it one third of the day, maybe eight hours at night. You know, and it, and it fell just when we were there. That was the first night we were there that it fell. It ruined our whole camping trip, obviously. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> the, the best advice is, I mean, people are going to camp, but try not to park if it's just leaning it just a little bit. Boy, I'm going to try not to, you know, park. Well, that's you know, um, <laughs> that would be the only advice to you never park. Even if you're leaning just a little bit, it could fall. Right. All right, Clarence. Uh, thanks. I'm going to, I'm going to edit this video now. And, uh, yeah, I think people will really learn from this. Um, cause you know, mo that's one thing that most people don't think about is, is the tree factor i mean a big tree they they usually look at like dead trees that are medium sized but a big old tree most people do not take that into effect and and uh that those things can rot from the inside yeah i, I just i've never taken it seriously before but i certainly will now yeah i bet a lot of other people will now too oh <laughs> uh, sure all right thanks a lot clarence you too, man. Talk to you later. Bye. All right, guys. So that was really interesting. I got to say that looking at big trees has never really been a big factor for me either. I figured, you know, the wind's not going to be able to blow that over anything. Um, the tree even looked healthy on the outside, but it was rotting from the inside, from bugs or what whatnot. And he didn't take that into effect. And I don't know whether most of you guys say you do or not. I'm sure that 90% of our viewers don't think about the big tree that looks healthy. Um, it's just something we totally look past. And it's always the little things, too. It's always the little things that can become so huge. Like, Do you guys remember when, when I was smelling propane in the in the Lydia's RV and it just started we thought it was a leak from somewhere and we didn't know what the heck it was and it what it was was the oven knob was just on just a little bit somebody had accidentally during the night to go to the bathroom turned turned the oven thing they bumped into it and and it turned on just a little bit so propane was leaking throughout the entire RV during the night nobody knew it and we could have really blown up uh, that's on another video but it just goes to show you the little things and being aware of things is so important when RVing that could have ended really tragically and there's so many good people out there bad things happen to it really sucks so I wanted to take this time to make this video and just remind everybody about the little things to just be safe out there. Um, if this video can help one person, then I did my job. If it could save one person. Um, of course, I'm always making videos about dangers and stuff in the RVs. 
um, little dangers I've got plenty of videos up there and every time something new comes up I always post that um, like the carbon monoxide debate should it go should the carbon monoxide detector go up high or down low etc I'm always posting stuff like that so make sure you hit the subscribe button and um, keep watching the videos guys I got a lot coming a lot of upgrades to this truck camper um a lot of traveling and a lot of good times good laughs and stuff so peace out guys and please be safe out there bye